I'd love to welcome Hanya Yanagihara on the stage. So, what's the title? Which, which interpretation of To Paradise has, suggests the title? Well, first, I'll sort of back into the answer and I'll say that, you know, in America, typically, I mean, first of all, the idea of paradise is a walled garden. It is, it is meant to keep people out and, and, and not allow people in. And so one of the things I started thinking about was the central mythology of America, which is that America is a paradise for everybody. And of course, paradise, by its very definition, cannot be for everybody. And yet, the metaphor, which is so imperfect, the problem with it is that it is perfect enough. Because for many people whose ancestors chose to come to the country, including my own, America was a kind of paradise and is a kind of paradise, um, much more than the places they were leaving. And so I started thinking about the, the very American idea of paradise. First of all, it's always the West. Typically in America, paradise has meant the West. You go farther and farther and farther. You went to California, then you fell off the country, and then you went to Hawaii. <laughs> but paradise is also, in, in America, something within. And it, it is this suggestion that happiness, not contentment, but bliss, is something that you can achieve if you believe hard enough, or you work hard enough, or you try hard enough. And it is a very punishing belief, because it suggests that if you are somehow incapable of finding happiness, it is your fault. And, 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 and I think that's a very dangerous way um, for us to teach our children how to think about what they should want in life and, and what the idea of, of happiness is. Um, that it is something that is purely dependent upon their ability to achieve it. What st state of mind were you in that you started a huge work like this? The, the ideas arrived together and they seemed inseparable from one another, but it took me some time to figure out how they were speaking to one another, how mm -hmm. they were related. It, it, with the first book, which is set in 1893, I, well, first I had always wanted to write a marriage novel um, which is a kind of, you know, a literary subgenre that exists in every culture around the world. All marriage novels are about money, ultimately. Yeah. And, I mean, all novels are about money. It's, it's a very postmodern idea to think that the novel is inseparable from money. Because, you know, Tolstoy knew it, you know, Austen knew it, Dickens knew it. All of them knew that the characters' motivations, their possibilities, their worlds were ultimately defined by how much money they had. And if you were a woman, it was not, well, your, your possibilities in life were directly affected by how much money you had or how much money you could marry into. And so I started thinking, what if I could write a marriage novel, a 19th century marriage novel that wasn't gendered in that way, where the, the, the idea of money itself was not gendered. And then also, could I write a version of America that had not been founded on Puritanism? And, you know, Puritanism in the United States owes, is, I think, in many ways similar to Calvinism here. And um, it, it, it's a quite punishing form of Christianity. And if you change that, then the idea of love would change, the idea of gender would change, the idea of race would not change. Um, but that was the beginning of that, of that book. But the three sections arrived very much at the same time, as I said, and, um, and I knew they had something to do with one another, but I couldn't figure out how or why or what. And did you ever get confused by yourself? No, oh. no, they were such distinct worlds, and world building is great fun, and it just has to make logical sense within the world you create. And the three books seem to have their own styles, literary styles. So the first book is based on the style of Henry James. And the other two, what styles were they? Well, I wanted to write more of a modern novel in section two. So it begins, the, the first part of that section unfolds over the course of a single night and is told um, in, in the third person. And then it moves into the first person narrative, which again is, is a very, you know, kind of, not a modern invention, but one a, a style we associate with modernity, and then the third part is told in an old-fashioned form, in in a, in you know in alternating voices, one of which is um, a young woman 
talking to someone we don't know, maybe to herself, and the second part is a series of, of letters again. Letters, I mean, yes. I love epistolary novels. Yeah. The biggest variation on actual reality of the three books to me is that the blood ties are no longer important or of consequence. Mm. People marry, but marries, marriages are arranged. Mm. Um, is that a thought experiment that you like or is it something you think is important or why? Well, I mean, one of the things that's always puzzled me is after so many thousands of years of human civilization, why the idea of family has remained relatively narrow and rigid. And maybe it's our evolutionary tendencies to, to form a tradition, what is known as a traditional family. But in the coming world, that might not be true. I mean, a, a family, the, the realization of a family depends on a society that allows it to exist, and it also depends on a certain amount of resources, and it depends upon the desire to procreate. We may no longer, we may, but, but maybe it, it's ultimately based on resources, and that, and, that, and that model may not be useful for the, for, you know, in the distant future. But a friend of mine said, which I've appropriated as my own, you know, he said that this book was very much about a challenge, a challenge the idea of what a parent was. Yeah. That maybe at the end of the day, a parent was an older person taking care of a younger person. And sometimes that older person was a literal parent, sometimes it was a boss, sometimes it was a grandparent, sometimes it was a lover. Um, but, but, you know, as we enter in these three worlds, traditional family members are in shorter supply for various reasons. And so people have to make their own unions, and they do so with what they have available to them. Uh, we have two microphones, so maybe someone wants to ask a question. With regards to taking uh, from history what you want and leaving the rest, I was curious as to why you chose to write an alternative reality surrounding queerness uh, in the way you did. I suppose one of the things I'm always interested in, and, and this book is interested in, is, you know, it, the stories that we know about this country, about America, are only the stories that have been written down. And there are many, many different possibilities of, of what this country could have been. And all of us in, in America, because it's such a young country, I think are always asking, what if? What if something, what if, you know, this law hadn't been passed, what if, what if that policy had been? What would this country be? And so to try to imagine a different kind of past for America in which those, those stories, which have always existed, but got to be told, I think is, is, is not only a fascinating exercise, but also something that the country is involved in in real time right now. My question is about the process of writing a book. Does it feel like it's your a story uh, of your own experience, or does yeah. it feel for everyone? Yeah. No, it feels like... Um, well, first, you, you begin by feeling you're in control, and then some, at some point, you hope that you're no longer in control, that you're just really writing things down. You're taking dictation. And then when things are going well and you feel like you're sailing and you have wind behind you, you just want to stay writing for as long as you can. And then there are long stretches of time in which you just want to throw the whole thing in. And then you get so sick of it, you can't wait to turn it in. So it's actually, it's less, I wish it were more of a spiritual um, experience. And it can be at times, but over the long course of it, no, I mean, I had this dream, this recurring dream when I was writing my first book, which took 16 years. And the dream was that I would wake up and I would go to, I, I literally had this dream. I would go to my computer and it would be magically done, like elves had come and finished the book for me. And there's some sort of very disappointing thing that happens when what's in here tries to, you try to translate what's in here and it's so shining and perfect to what's, to, to, to the screen. Something in that short journey something really gets lost often. And that's the most frustrating thing. It is, is, it's not making your characters not do what they want to do or so on. It is that it, there's something, something intangible gets lost on the journey itself. So I hope you're not a writer and this hasn't, you know, <laughs> depressed oh, you. Really you are a writer. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, what would you, would, 
do you have any advice as for the for a young person in modern days or as uh, to paradise kind of like just your encapsulation of yeah your ideas for that listen i'm glad i'm not young right now and i'm sorry that's like not a great answer but it's it's very hard because every every system and every generation older than you has really failed you i would say that it, Oh God, I would say don't be bitter and try to take as much pleasure as you can and try to, and I think, you know, it, you have a difficult, for, for those of you who have been raised with so many, uh, so much access to news, I think it's, it's important to look at the hard things as much as you can, but I think when you also have to decide what avenues of information to cut off, and I don't mean stop watching the news or stop reading, I mean that that you should stop looking at things that um, are about judging other people's appearances or lives, and as much as you can, you should travel and feel uncomfortable. And I think that is the best. I wish, you know, I, 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 if, if you can, and more of you can here than we can in the United States. But the most useful thing that I did as a young person and as a writer was find myself in situations where I felt occasionally unsafe, but often simply confused. And the, the privilege of getting to do that and the necessity of getting to do that, um, to watch humans in many different contexts, move and talk and, and, and think and worry uh, is, is the, best, um, uh, the best experience a writer can have and I think also the best thing a young person can do. Yes, I'm very uncomfortable right now. Thank you very much. <laughs>